sky, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. We are talking about an over-the-top beautiful postcard perfect day here in the collapse of everything. <coughs> here at Bugs in a Jar Farm where we have rolled into September of 2024. It is a Sunday, September 1st, 2024, here in the uh, middle of Labor Day weekend. Uh, and this is the my uh, calm before the storm of my latest influx of uh, Labor Day tourists getting out there and enjoying the spectacularly gorgeous last weekend of summer 2024 while they still can. But before they get here, I just want to uh, give a big hand to this fellow I've been talking about quite a bit recently from Medium.com, this doomer named Eric Lee. Eric Lee, and while Eric is a very good doom scroller himself, uh, you know, making content, he's got a special talent to spot some other good doom scrolling that he likes to share with his readers, and since uh, his readers are probably my listeners, I'm just going to share a, a couple of uh, papers that Eric has shared recently. This first one uh, by this fellow I have never heard of named Ruben Nelson. Ruben Nelson, even when I looked up his biography and read his biography, I am still unclear who the hell Ruben Nelson is. He's some... Uh, futurist from uh, Canada studying the, uh, you know, the collapse of everything. And uh, I, and Eric completely fails to mention where he found this, but I do appreciate it, so I cannot link you to where he found it. The five points to consider Per Ruben Nelson. So this is Ruben Nelson just giving us five points to consider here uh, at the close of summer of 2024. I have no clue uh, if Ruben wrote this in the last week or 20 years ago. So Eric, you do need to do a little bit better job, brother, of uh, you know, saying where you got your stuff from. But anyway, wherever it came from, we're going to let Ruben Nelson give us five points to consider. Then we're going to go back to 1970 and look at 50 points to consider. But take it away, Ruben Nelson, whoever the hell you are. <clears throat> and what Ruben is talking about is what we are up against. What are we up against, Ruben? Number one, what we are up against is the modern techno-industrial, otherwise known as the MTI form of civilization, whose proximal beginning was in what is now Europe almost 1,000 years ago. I agree that over this time, modern techno-industrial MTI cultures have fleshed themselves out and gone global. Today there is no part of the planet they have not reached. There is no place to hide. MTI persons in MTI cultures basically own the place and have the most destructive institutions and weapons. Our focused must be on the MTI, the modern techno-industrial form of civilization, its 
disintegration in our response to this. Point number two to consider. <clears throat> we are not merely, merely facing, yes, right, ecological overshoot, but civilizational overshoot. Put simply, we do not even understand what we are up against as long as we keep using the logic and categories which dominate MTI cultures. As Einstein quipped, we cannot use the same kind and level of thinking that got us into trouble to get us out. The reason is that the MTI form of civilization has become lethal. This means that there is good news. MTI cultures are self-limiting. They are dying. Degrowth is already baked in. It has already begun, just not in the way we now talk about it, as if we, meaning humans, can control and manage our descent if we try hard enough. The bad news is, is that as MTI cultures disintegrate and collapse, they will take many more life forms with them, including many more question mark humans. Okay, point number three to consider. There is no way to, quote, save modern techno-industrial cultures since most sustainability work, including AI, is devoted to saving MTI cultures. We need to call it out. The longer we keep funding the illusion that we can save our MTI ways of being and living, the worse the destruction will be. Point to consider number four. The issues we face are these. A. What can be done to limit the destruction of life as our MTI ways of being and living disintegrate. What can be done to limit the destruction of life as our MTI ways of being and living disintegrate? B. What can be done to mitigate the conditions that the human and non-human life forms that survive the disintegration of MTI cultures will face conditions that will be reasonably conducive to their continuation. And C, what can be done now to reduce the public panic and despair that will emerge as the reality of our situation actually sinks in to a critical mass of citizens. In short, what can be done now to help MTI persons in MTI cultures grow up enough that we allow for a good death as MTI persons in MTI cultures. And point five items to consider as our modern techno-industrial techno civilization collapses and falls around us and this is where, of course, the apocaloptimism, the ain't gonna happen, apocaloptimism comes in that uh, Reuben Nelson is a hopium-soaked apocaloptimist 
So uh, he is putting this in his hopium pipe to smoke. Number five, new forms of civilization have emerged in human history. This means at least in principle that it is possible for a new form of civilization to emerge. More of our energy should be focused on identifying and understanding the conditions which have led to the emergence of the forms of civilization we have already seen in human history and on teasing out of such understandings lessons that may be applicable to our situation and times. Sadly, the amount of energy devoted to, devoted to this work is so marginal, it is negligible, which is another way of saying it ain't going to happen that uh, humans, being humans, are, uh, are, are going to just create some environmentally sustainable civilization after this one uh, gets put to bed. But anyway, that was me. Uh, wrap it up, Reuben. There appear to be ways for persons and smallish groups to outgrow their formation as MTI persons in MTI cultures. It is unclear as yet the degree to which this process can be scaled, you, you, you know, to uh, more than a, than a few roving bands of uh, uh, post-collapse savages. We won't know unless we try. We will not try unless we see the need to do so. This takes us back to where we started. What understanding of the deepest trouble we are in can we trust enough to give our lives to it? Yes, and uh, this gets back to the question that, you know, I keep getting back to the, the only question uh, from here on out is how do we, you know, as individuals in a collapsing modern techno-industrial civilization, how do we comport ourselves for the rest of our lives once we take in this knowledge on a cellular level, how fucked we are. And the only answer I've come up with uh, after 16 years uh, of beating around uh, this dead horse down here in the Doomosphere is to get out there and enjoy it while you still can. Which is getting tougher and tougher. But, uh... That was Eric from a couple of days ago, and uh, today Eric is asking the question, do modern humans have a future? Modern humans have problems. Are there any solutions? <clears throat> so Eric leads off with, Modern humans who are paying attention should have existential concerns for humanity and the biosphere. The list of problems grows exponentially and all are interrelated. And then uh, oh, what Eric does is he turns the clock back 54 years. 54 years, going back to 1970, uh, where he dug up this paper called The Predicament of Mankind. Remember, 54 years ago, this paper titled The Predicament of Mankind, 
quest for structural responses to growing worldwide complexities and uncertainties a proposal. And then he shared what they did was, it's a little unclear. Again, Eric, the, the one place that Eric uh, could do better, brother, just in case Eric Lee is listening to this, you could do a little bit better job of sourcing this. But anyway, I, 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 it, it's a little bit unclear. But I think what the authors of this paper uh, did was list uh, 54 years ago, uh, I guess, 101 things to, uh, to look forward to, I guess, over the next 54 years. And number one on the list from 1970, number one on the list explosive population growth. Number one on the list in 1970 when what there were less than half as many people on the planet as alive today. The number one uh, critical problems shaping up on this planet explosive population growth and then the next hundred of these crystal ball uh, things to look for in, in their list can all, all go back to the number one on the list. Explosive population growth. Uh, they could have stopped right there. But uh, once uh, that was out of the bag, we're just going to, Eric goes through the first 50 before he peters out. I'm not necessarily going to read the next 50, but uh, after explosive population growth, look for widespread poverty throughout the world. <clears throat> Number three, increase in the production destructive capacity and accessibility of all weapons of war. Number four, uncontrolled urban sprawl. That certainly ties in with number one, uncontrolled urban sprawl. Uh, number five, generalized and growing malnutrition. Number six, persistence of widespread illiteracy. I think Sandy uh, shared this cartoon with me uh, recently uh, where we have access to information, you know, more and more access access to information, the more we get access to information, the less we have a collective grasp of reality. And the fellow in the cartoon, assuming present trends continue, the odds are quite good that we will become the best informed extinct species on the planet. But uh, he just threw that one in uh, the list. Uh, expanding mechanization and bureaucratization of almost all human activity. How about growing inequalities in the distribution of wealth throughout the world? Let's do not forget insufficient and irrationally organized medical care. How about hardening discrimination against minorities? Uh, I'm just uh, I'm just going to start stabbing uh, 
affluence and its unknown consequences. I think where the consequences of affluence, otherwise known as overshoot when paired with overpopulation, are becoming quite well known. Anachronistic and irrelevant education. How about generalized environmental deterioration? Wow, generalized lack of agreed on alternatives to present trends. That was written 54 years ago. Uh, how about widespread failure to stimulate man's creative capacity to confront the future. Uh, and don't forget continuing deterioration of inner cities and slums. Yes, uh, <laughs> can you recognize growing irrelevance of traditional values and continuing failure to evolve new value systems. Hmm. Have you ever heard of inadequate shelter and transportation? How about obsolete and discriminatory income distribution systems? Huh. Wow. Accelerating waste and exhaustion of natural resources, which goes into the growing environmental pollution, falling into generalized alienation of youth, which uh, may or may not have something to do with major disturbances of the world's physical ecology generally inadequate and obsolete institutional arrangements. I like this one uh, from the Ain't Gonna Happen Roundup from 1970. Limited understanding of what is feasible in the way of corrective measures. Do not forget an unbalanced population distribution forming on the planet uh, from 1970 onwards. Uh, can you say Donald Trump ideological fragmentation and semantic barriers to communication between individuals, groups, and nations? Uh, how about increasing asocial and antisocial behavior and a consequent rise in criminality? Uh, of course, widespread unemployment is easy one. Uh, how about spreading discontent through most classes of society? Don't forget the polarization of military power and the psychological impact of the policy of deterrence. Uh, fast obsolescing political structures. How about irrational agricultural practices? Wow. Have you heard of irresponsible use of pesticides, chemical additives, insufficiently tested drugs, fertilizers, etc.? Huh. Back to Donald Trump. Growing use of distorted information to influence and manipulate people. How about a fragmented international monetary system? That's one to be on the lookout for. Don't forget 
growing technological gaps and lags between developed and developing areas. Hmm, new modes of localized warfare. Inadequate participation of people at large public at at large in public decisions. Yes, the absence of the public in public decisions. Uh, unimaginative conceptions of world order and the rule of law. There you go. Uh, going back 54 years, irrational distribution of industry supported by policies that will strengthen the current patterns. I love this one, and we're going to close in a minute. Uh, we're on number 44. With the growing tendency to be satisfied with technological solutions for every kind of problem. We certainly, that is a major factor in the AGH roundup, and we'll come back to that to close this rant in a minute. Uh, of course, obsolete system of world trade. Insufficient authority of international agencies. <laughs> Irrational practices in resource management. Number 49, insufficient understanding of continuous critical problems of their nature, their interactions, and of the future consequences both they and current solutions to them are generating and then even